This is exercise 5-2, part A. In this part, we're analyzing this piece of music using Roman numerals, including bass position symbols. And then we'll also look at how the chord is voiced and write whether it's a close voicing or an open voicing. So let's start with the Roman numerals. So this piece is in the key of A major. So what I've done, I've written out my A major scale and all of my chord qualities, because that will help me later when I'm doing analysis. And I am going to figure out what this first chord is. So all these notes, except for the ones that they've put in parentheses here, we're going are part of the chord. So we're going to take all these notes, take inventory of all of these notes, try to make a snowman out of all these notes. So we'll go note by note using our scratch paper. So our first pitch that we have in this chord, I like to work from the bottom up. There's an A, so I'll find somewhere to put an A, and I'm gonna try to build a snowman around this A. Moving up, there's an E. Okay, I'll keep that on a space. Since I put my first A on a space, I wanna put every other note also on a space. So I wanna put that E there, not down there or anywhere else. Then there's a C sharp. C sharp can go right there. I guess I should put my key signature in there too. So, so far I have an A, a C sharp, and an E. We're not counting this F or this G because they're in parentheses. Let's see, there's another A, I already have one of those. Another E, I have one of those. A C sharp, I already have one of those. An A, I have one of those written down. And another C sharp. So those are all the notes that are in the chord. Uh, starting with the next blank, that's the next chord. This chord is all of the notes until we hit the next blank. So now that I've taken inventory of all my notes, I can see that this is an A chord because it's stacked in a snowman. It's an A chord. And because of my cheat sheet, I've memorized all of my Roman numeral chord qualities in a major key. I know that one chords in a major key are always major. So that means that this is a one chord then we need to check the inversion. So the root of this chord is A, and we want to look at our piece and see what the lowest note is. It's an A. So this is a root position chord. So root position triads don't get any kind of bass position symbol. If instead C sharp was the lowest note, then this would be first inversion, and I would write a little six next to my Roman numeral one. Or if E, was the lowest note, then this would, chord would be in second inversion, and I'd write a little 6-4. But since this is in root position, I won't write anything at all. <clears throat> Next, we have to determine whether this is a close or an open voicing. So we're going to look at the top three voices. You can see this is kind of like a soprano line, and an alto line, and a tenor line, and a bass line. So we're going to look at the distance between our soprano and our tenor and if that is an octave or smaller it's a close voicing if it's bigger than an octave then it's an open voicing so we can see the tenor has an E here an E3 and the soprano has an E4 so the spacing is a exactly an octave but if we look at where this soprano line is going, the soprano line is going up from here. So eventually we get to the point where we have E3 compared to C sharp 5, which is more than an octave. So looking at the chord in total, the widest voicing means that this is an open voicing, not a closed voicing. If they asked us how it changed, we would say that it uh, starts as a close voicing and then moves to an open voicing. But if we just have to pick one, let's look at everything all together and we'll consider this an open voicing.